talking about climate change yesterday and now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose that's right lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning cbs this morning contributor michio kaku is a physics professor at city college of new york professor nice to see you extraordinary seeing al gore and bill clinton there together with charlie wasn't it that's right yeah, yeah. they did not get into this discussion no. though <laughs> but it is fascinating i mean lasers really to change the weather that's right well as mark twain once famously said everyone complains about the weather but no one ever does anything about it well instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. It's experimental. However, in the laboratory so far it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Go ahead. Well, I, I, this is fascinates me in part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Governments have been playing with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. This time we're bringing in the laws of physics rather than simply uh, waving our hands and uttering mumbo jumbo. <laughs> We're actually using trillion watt lasers yeah. now. And in the laboratory, sure enough, they precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure enough, you can actually bring down electricity mm -hmm. down, the, down the beam. So what does it mean for drought areas that, that need to have rain for crops? And if they don't have them, uh, there's in the consequences of famine. Well, the bad news is if it's a clear blue sky, it's not going to do anything at all because it only takes water vapor that's already in the air and condenses it. However, for floods, for agriculture, for farmers, for people planning wedding parties, uh, football <laughs> games, you name it, outdoor events and agriculture and flooding and even hurricanes, all of them could be subject to weather modification. Incredibly mm. interesting, Professor Michio Kaku. Thank you so much. Mm. Scientists accidentally admitted weather control is currently happening on CBS News. Physicist Dr. Michio Kaku accidentally admitted that the skies were being sprayed with nanoparticles and lasers to modify the weather. While people who are familiar with covert geoengineering and our skies being sprayed know for a fact this is happening, rarely is it admitted by people in positions of influence. People in positions of influence propose that the skies be sprayed to combat climate change, but they never exactly admit it is already happening, in this little known slip up. A mainstream scientist admitted it. In the interview, Michio Kaku briefly dips into the history of weather modification, in little detail compared to extensive works, such as the book Chemtrails Exposed, a new Manhattan project. Very quickly, the CBS crew interrupted him to say the state weather modification programs were only alleged. That might even suggest the CBS staff was explicitly told never to approach that topic. One detail in a plethora of academic papers and patents about altering the weather with electromagnetic energy and conductive particles in the stratosphere, research published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences said the laser beams can create plasma channels in air, causing ice to form. According to Professor Wolf Kasparian, Under the conditions of a typical storm cloud, in which ice and supercooled water coexist, no direct influence of the plasma channels on ice formation or precipitation processes could be detected. Under conditions typical for thin cirrus ice clouds, however, the plasma channels induced a surprisingly strong effect of ice multiplication. Within a few minutes, the laser action led to a strong enhancement of the total ice particle number density in the chamber by up to a factor of 100 even though only a 10-9 fraction of the chamber volume was exposed to the plasma channels. The newly formed ice particles quickly reduced the water vapor pressure to ice saturation, 
thereby increasing the cloud optical thickness by up to three orders of magnitude. To really understand geoengineering, researchers have identified defense contractors Raytheon, by systems, and corporations such as General Electric as being heavily involved with geoengineering. According to Peter A. Kirby, Massachusetts has historically been a center of geoengineering research. With the anomalous hurricanes currently ravaging the Americas, floods destroying India, and wildfires destroying the Pacific Northwest, weather warfare is a topic on the public consciousness right now. Please share this with as many people as possible.